All right, let's get all of our cursing out of us before we start, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Let's get it rolling. Fucking shit, fucker. I can't swear anymore because YouTube. That's gonna be one of the longest bleeps. <laughs> That's gonna be one of the no, longest that bleeps. To be in there. Okay, so welcome to the podcast. This is the Ghost Gang podcast. We don't know what we're going to name it yet. This is a trial. And uh, we are just uh, trying our hand at it. We got some good equipment. We got our buddy Blade helping us out over here. Mm-hmm. He's off camera, but Shout he's 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 very sexy. He's a very sexy man. Thick as fuck, I might add. Just a little. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Bro has to be packing. Yeah. Carrying <laughs> <laughs> around a fucking diaper on him or something. <laughs> oh, I already dropped his swear. <laughs> man, there's gonna be there might be a lot of bleeps in this podcast. We're getting used to it. But um, thanks YouTube. Thanks YouTube. Anyways, why are we here? Please monetize us. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess this podcast would be a good um, a good start to kind of uh, tell you guys about Ghost Gang and who we are and a little bit of our origins. For those of you who don't know who Ghost Gang is, we are an automotive lifestyle brand based around the car scene. We sell hoodies, hats, merch, stickers all online, and we travel all around North America for shows. We are also a members-only club we have members all over the world and representatives all over the world and all kinds of different countries and uh, uh aside from the merch i think we're really trying to get in on the youtube game because a lot of people don't know this but uh if you look back that is where we started on me and andre back in the day started out very awkwardly on youtube <laughs> all the little diy stuff i don't even think beginnings of the shop i wasn't even around for that no point. no you no you were you were you weren't even a thought Dude, I was probably still in the ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so old, dude. Yeah. I'm so old. <laughs> you you make me feel old. Really? I don't know. Dude, I'm only like two or three years younger than you. But me. you just don't know anything. No, I don't. You're so I've like, been under the rock my whole you're life. You're so right uncultured. Here. You're too sheltered. <laughs> you're just too sheltered, I think. Especially when it comes to car scene stuff. Yeah. yeah like I'm the like car scene very, that you're in. new to it. Yeah. Like the car scene that you're in right now is very like... Not what I started off out in, or like what me and Andre started off out in. What we started off out in was like very, it felt very underground, like very JDM esque. Like when we got into the car scene, there was R32s and MK4 Supras and like Evo 7s, Evo 8s, Evo 9s, um, all that crazy stuff everywhere. It was like normal in the car scene. FDR 7s, like 780 tuners here in Edmonton actually used to have a, uh, a big season opener. And that's kind of where UC started. Yeah, I think so. But in 2015, I remember UC had a season opener that spanned from United Cycle to the two hotels down the other side of, insane, of, the, of Gateway Boulevard. You can't imagine filling that lot no, now. No, no you can't happen. imagine. And it's just a sad fact that the, the car scene here, in our city specifically, I think, is dying. Oh, 100%, man. And Not enough people are building their cars either. No. Uh, building. Well, building. Building their cars. That's well, that's a little bit people of People building them, but... That's a little bit of a touchy subject. I mean... Yeah. But everybody starts somewhere. Absolutely. But it's not just that. I think what really ties into what hurts our scene here is the police. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The exhaust stuff, the tint stuff. Like, I got impounded for having an aftermarket steering wheel. Yeah, that's ridiculous. On my Mitsubishi Eclipse. And my Mitsubishi Eclipse is probably one of the least modified vehicles that I have. Oh, 100%. Yeah. What do you have? Wide body, tint wheels. Well, yeah. That's it. Didn't even bother me for my exhaust. My steering wheel. Well, actually, it was a little bit more of a funnier story than that. Um, I got pulled. So, here in uh, Alberta, we have modified check stops. And basically, it's like, you know how you have a check stop for drinking and driving? They will um, pull you in uh, right off the highway, not speeding, not doing anything. You don't have any cause. They'll pull you in just by the looks of your car. Yep. And in my situation, they pulled me over because I have mirror tint all around. Kind of asking for it. I understand that, but I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Mirror tint is like the best thing I've ever done in my life. Um, they pulled me over. He said, you can, p- you can pull your tint off or I'm going to tell you. So I get out and I start peeling my tint off. He gave me a razor blade and everything. And I started peeling it off. And then he comes over and he says, I'm towing you anyways, after I got the half the driver's side done. And uh, I asked why. And he says, because you have an aftermarket steering wheel. Oh my 
God, what a and man. then and then they proceed to um, put my car on a flat deck. My car is static. Like my yeah. car, it, I drive it like I park it. Yeah. And they put it on a flat deck about like this much of an angle. Like yeah, like that dude, it work. was like a, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> it was like a forty five degree angle, and uh, they tore the whole rear end off my car. They cracked my oh, taillight. Right. The diffuser too. The right? diffuser just gone. They cracked the taillight. They ripped the bumper off. Um, this I'm, was very early this season too. Yeah, it yeah. was it. No, it was. I think it was just after Calgary driven. Yeah, I think so. They yeah. nabbed me. Right. They nabbed me up, and uh, they gave me a bunch of fix it tickets, and uh, I couldn't make it to a certain date. And this officer told me that I could call him to reschedule if I couldn't make it, and then if not, he was gonna come to my door. Okay, come to my door. What are you gonna do? Right. <laughs> you're it's a car. Grow you're up. a peace officer, dude. Yeah. Come to my door. <laughs> you're gonna keep the peace at my door. Okay. Um. So, anyways, he's threatened all this, all that. If I don't get it done, I tried to call him, couldn't get through to him. Left him voicemails, voicemails, voicemails. I need to fix my car to be able to make it drivable. You guys broke my car. I need to be able to make it drivable to get to this inspection. Right. So instead of reverting my car to stock, I just paid the tickets. Yep. And he sent more tickets because I didn't go, and I just paid those tickets because reverting my car to stock for an inspection Dude, is going to cost, cost me more money. Right. It's triple. going to cost me way more money. Probably triple, yeah. Yeah, easy. Rather than to just not go and pay the tickets. And that's what it's coming down to now. And I think because of that, they're starting to leave people alone. Yeah. That's, like, I drove, I was in the purple Hawkeye today. Yeah. And uh, I drove past two peace officers on the highway. That is probably one of the loudest cars we own. Yeah. 5% tin on the windows. Didn't even look at me. Dude, and it's like and it was visually loud. loud too, yeah, it's right? the it's, purple stands. It's out. literally like Grimace from McDonald's. It's Absolutely, like one of the man. yeah. It's if Grimace Shake was a vehicle. <laughs> <that's what> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's quite an attention grabbing car, and uh, yeah, didn't even get looked at twice. Oh man, the cops like here. It feels like car racism almost. The it's way that they target us. Well, what, what's what's the proper name for it, Blade? Help me out here. It's um. Not harassment, but something along. It's, uh, oh my God, profiling. Yeah. It's profiling. Absolutely. So, like, I understand why they have these laws in place. Because there are idiots on the road that go around with their cars completely rusted out. Yeah. And, like, panels falling off, and exhaust falling exhaust, off. Exhaust, yeah. But it's, like, that's not the, the goal anymore. No. The goal is to go get the guys with the most nicely modified vehicles. Yeah, they want, they're after the tuner cars. The big shiny wheels. Right? Like, they, they don't even give a fuck about the V8 cars. Like the old shit. <clears throat> no. Like and that's not even the ones that are causing trouble. And I might catch no. a little bit of flack for saying this, but it's the off the lot Chargers. It's the off the lot yeah. Mustangs. It's the off the lot Camaros. The Supras, the Stingers. The new Supras, the Stingers. If yeah. you're in Edmonton, you know orange yep. Stingers and yellow yeah. Supras. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, yeah. I haven't seen those guys around in a while. Oh, and you sure. won't, and you won't see them for no. a while. So probably for a good thing. Oh, absolutely. Probably for a good reason, though. Yeah. We don't need that in the scene. No, anymore. we don't need that in the scene, and that that kind of can bring us into the topic of um, takeovers. Yeah, I think our last experience with one would have been the season closer. Not we didn't not this year. We didn't have one. No, I the year before we've that. been too tied up in the U.S. doing shows that we didn't get to do anything. Yeah. But takeovers, like, I understand having fun, like, not at a track. Absolutely. But there's a time and place. Yeah. At and a very busy car show with a ton of spectators, that's not the spot for In it. an intersection? No. No. It's ridiculous. It's not a spot. You're a clown. If, that, if, you're, if, if you think going out there and setting an example for all these young kids just about to get their license, that that is how it's supposed to be, taking over intersections and stuff, that's not how it is. That's just how people get hurt. And you see more people get hurt than you do see these events go normal these sideshows these takeovers okay. yeah i don't know there's no there's no place for takeovers in this scene not really now i mean it, earlier you could get away with it because not everybody had a camera in their pocket to record or live stream right you can't get away with anything these days no there's always a camera on you no matter where you're at yeah so but besides the fact too it's like it's it's glorifying this this hundred oh, percent man. All these kids see it, right? They're fifteen, sixteen, just got their license kind mm-hmm. of thing, or getting their first car. Yeah. They're gonna want to go do donuts in the middle of the intersection because that's what's been portrayed to them as cool. Yeah. Right? And it's the farthest thing from cool. Oh, absolutely. Anybody who's not. been in the scene who's like, I don't know, we're not old heads, but like we we've been around for a bit and that's just clown. 
clown movement. Yeah, I would rather see everyone put their car on washers than another takeover again. <laughs> Honestly, man. <laughs> oh, that's that's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm for real, man. There's a couple builds here that are on washers, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just get springs, bro. It Call is it what a it day. is. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but um, anything for fitment, though. Yeah, anything for fitment. Yep. Um, I'm, which I'm kind of falling out of. I don't know. I'm a big camber guy, big stance guy, but like I'm really starting to fall into the the f- the function over form kind of. I get it. I but think that's it's because drift cars for started building a drift car. Absolutely, so. but you still have to keep your stance car because that's the roots. That's where that's the ghost gang car. Uh, yeah, right? I don't the, the eclipse. The only way I'll ever get rid of my eclipse is if I were to get a Supra. Oh, easy. The that is one of the end goal cars is MK4 Supra. Yeah, because for me when I was younger, I um was very close multiple times. Yeah. So the story is, is that I worked for my dad for two summers in a row and barely got paid, let him save the money for me. And um, basically I was like roofing way underage <laughs> than I should have. Um, and uh, I saved up this money to get a Supra, but every Supra we went and looked at was not good enough for him. Cause right. like my dad's not his expectations, but he's right? not like mechanically inclined. So he would like bring my cousin around who like would build like old eclipses and like talons back in the day to like yeah. race. And, um, I don't know. They just didn't know the cars and they did obviously didn't know the worth or see the worth in them. So back then that was probably like, w- when did I get my license? Like 2012, 2013 kind of era. Yeah. Um, was when I, or no, like I got my license was should have been like 2014, I think. So it was like around the 2012 I was looking to get. I remember I did get my car before, like a year before I got my actual license. But um, yeah, everyone that they would, every Supra that they would go and look at, it was either like, oh, the side skirts are cracked. Oh, it's blowing white smoke. Oh, it smells like oil. Like, right, like nothing you would look past. Dude, these now, Supras right? were like the, the, the budget range was like $7,500. To twelve five. That's nuts. And the one that we went to look at, it was oh man, the it was a I believe it was a ninety seven RZ. I could be wrong because I don't know if the RZs did come out in that year, but it was a left hand drive target top, graphite gray, big single turbo, making four hundred and fifty wheel. And anyways, I was chatting back and forth with this guy, back and forth with this guy, and uh, I can't remember, but like we got like twelve, or we got like uh, probably like. 12, 15 kilometers out of Airdrie where the car was. Buddy texts me. He's like, yeah. I can't remember if he was like, yeah, I'm not selling it or yeah, it's it's sold. But that was a situation. And then that was oh, my man. that was my hopes crushed. gone on a Supra. Yeah, I was so crushed, dude. Yeah. And then, funny enough, my first car ended up being a 2007 Mitsubishi Eclipse GT, which I still have. I'll get into why I still have it in a bit, but I did not want that car. And I, I know think, it sounds. Yeah, I know it yeah. sounds ungrateful. that like, oh, you you got you your first car. But the difference is, is like I, 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 I worked. Like, I saved up yeah, for it, so I, mean, I did want to get. When I your wanted. end goal was a Supra, and you ended up with an Eclipse, I think anyone in their mm-hmm. right mind would be a little upset. To about my that. parents, it was close. Right, because it, it looks s- the same. Yeah. Right. N- kinda. Oh. One looks like a blade. Likes to call it a hard shell turtle or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a turtle tank. Keeps it. <laughs> I mean, I could live now. It does now. It looks like a turtle tank after what we did to it. But yeah. um, I mean, I wasn't like, oh man, like fuck this car. Like I don't want this. Like this, it wasn't like that. I was grateful, and I, I drove the shit out of the car. And uh, I didn't like. I'm not mechanically inclined. I couldn't modify it to the way I wanted to. Plus, there was no aftermarket support for the car. Right. Anybody who drives a, a Mitsubishi Eclipse would know that. I tried trading that car. I tried selling that car. Like, I remember listing it for 12.5, thinking, like, oh, I'm another Supra. It might come up around for, like, 12.5 or something like that. Right. I tried to trade it for a um, 350Z multiple times. Almost went through with it. Thank God I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a takeover car right there. Uh, eh. I kind of I kind of feel bad for Z's. Not to get off topic here, but I kind of yeah. do feel bad for Z's because they do get a bad rep. Because back around that era, like, 20, 2012 to, like, 2015, a Z was one of the gangsters' cars to have. Right. If anybody knows that era, it was like white 350Zs bagged on gold BBSLM wheels. You were the shit. You were the shit with that kind of car. But um, now, yeah, they've got a kind of a bad rep for sounding like trumpets and this, that, and the other. But I still enjoy I still enjoy a good yeah. Z. Especially Z33s, Fair Ladies. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, Can't go wrong. The which, Newsy is even nice. I kind of fuck with that one, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at one right now behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Hot Wheel. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, fast forward a little bit. And uh, I was just with Andre one day. We looked at the car. I uh, looked at him and I was like, man, we got to do something different. If I'm going to keep this car, we got to do something different because I couldn't sell it. I, I like I right. physically could not sell it. It's not it's not a wanted car. Right. right. No one's really after, it's not like a super sought after car kind of thing. No, no, no. We're like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with it? And then we noticed uh, a guy in the States named, shout out Drowsy Eclipse. OG, OG in in the Eclipse scene. Um, I was very in the Eclipse scene, all the forums and everything like that. Because there's no, like I said, there's no aftermarket support. Right. But uh, this Drowsy Eclipse guy was starting to take like, 350z wide body kits and stuff and retrofitting them to the car so me and andre kind of looked at it and we we're like okay like uh, a 350z has a rocket bunny kit but like it kind of looked like it would bolt up so we kind of wanted a little bit of a challenge so we looked at the brz kit and we're like okay like this is a little bit challenging like the gas caps on the opposite side on this car and yeah. got to cut out the tail lights and this that and the other but we just ordered the kit Stupid, young, naive me ordered an authentic, gritty, like, a Rocket Bunny kit from Gretty's website. And we got it, man. And we took it right to the grinder. Just started cutting it up, cutting it up. Me, Andre, and our friend Cadell. Cadell was just starting to get in welding. And now he has his own rig and everything. Shout out Cadell. Shout out McCarran Welding. Yeah, that's that's where where the, the, the build started with that car. And it was, uh, it was fun, man. It was like one of those... Like, I think what kind of drove me to do it was um, all, all of the behind-the-scenes videos that Crispy Media produced with um, RWB, watching the Kai build all those cars like yeah, he did. Yeah. I don't know. We kind of felt like little fucking... He's a little in the Kai. We felt bro. like little in the Kai songs, yeah. So, like, you know we met in the Kai this yeah, summer, yes. like, on a very personal level, and that, that, that really resonated with me. I'm like, my younger self is freaking the oh, fuck out, Oh, absolutely, man. I was freaking out. Yeah, we got into it and we did it and we started catching the attention of the YYC locales. Uh, shout out Jesse from Infamous. Uh, Jesse noticed what I was doing and I was a big, big fanboy of locales back in the day because I come from the East Coast, Newfoundland. We don't have none of that out there. So I remember being in Newfoundland watching those boys. So that was a big moment for me to have those boys kind of acknowledge me doing something. Yeah. And it's funny how it comes full circle because that's all he does is custom wide body kits now yeah and no manufacturing. he's gonna be the new nakai yeah coming right he's up he's like here. canadian nakai son or no or, for real shout out infamous era yeah shout out infamous shout out jesse yeah. uh fast forward we got the car done uh it's one of our most viewed videos on the channel so go ahead and check that out if you haven't very very cringy because it's very early stages of me very young and naive uh but we made it work uh got into our first car show with it like accepted driven show stuff that back when it was like a lot harder to get into a show, I would, I would say, yeah, did some shows, never really won any awards with that car. I won one award, but that was like way after when I like did more stuff to it, but uh, that was fun. And then started talking with the locals boys, started hanging out with them more and more. And uh, before you knew it, I was kind of like on, on the, the locals team. Right. Yeah. You went to, uh, Stance Wars with them. I did go to Stance Wars with them, but before that, I went to, like, a lot of other events with them. I went to, uh, like, Driven Vancouver, Driven Calgary, Driven Edmonton. I went everywhere with those guys, and uh, I was, like, young. Uh, I I was working on the drilling rigs before, but I tend I, I left because it wasn't really for me. Right. And I just wanted to chase something that felt like it was more, right? Like, it was yeah. good money. Like, I could do it. Like, it, it was, like, it was a labor-intensive job, but, like, I was used to it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I did enjoy it. But uh, I didn't at the same time. I think I enjoyed the work more than I enjoyed, like, the lifestyle and some of the people you would deal with. Yeah. Like, older people that are, like, really, their whole life is oil field. And it's just, like. Right. I'm just so burned into their skull. I don't want my whole life to be oil field. You know what I mean? And I, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a person who's easily, like, impressionable to that kind of thing. No. But, like. I just, I didn't see myself. Yeah, I mean, that lifestyle on its own just doesn't seem like that glamorous either. No. You're like throwing 
multiple, multiple hours of your day just right at work mm -hmm. for a paycheck kind of thing. And it's so dangerous. It's so yeah. dangerous. Many what close calls. Many, many close calls in the years that I was working on the drill yeah. rigs. I know a lot of people that have been hurt on, yeah. the, on the rigs. I've period, been hurt. Kind of thing. I've been, I kind of, I got some stuff going on that I kind of think is because of that. Honestly, yeah. all that, all those smacks that you take tend to add up, man. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what's wrong with me. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> that reminds me of that one podcast uh, with Bobby Lee. Was it? I don't know, the, man. I'm Bobby Mum. <laughs> You've never seen Oh, that. I've seen that clip, <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so I I was, like, broke, obviously, because I left that. I had no money. Uh, like, I only had enough money to, like, pay my rent and, like, yeah. do this here and there. And I was coming up and wanting to start my own brand at the time, and I just, like, couldn't get it down to what I wanted to call it and stuff like that. And then um, one night I was just sitting at home and I was like playing Need for Speed 2015. And oh, yes. Yeah. Now, now I remember. I was, I was building a car. I was building an RWB Porsche. And I uh, something just struck me. I just love the way that it said ghost on the, yeah, uh, on the, on the plate. license plate. Yes. Yeah. I just love the way that it said ghost on the license plate. And I love the logo of like ghost games from, from EA. That's a, yes. is that an EA company? They were yes. out of Vancouver, right? Ghost games. Yeah. Yep. Their logo, all that stuff looked really cool to me. And just, I was like thinking, thinking, thinking I was ripping, ripping on the game, building cars and yeah, driving. Yeah. And then I, I remember I put the controller down and I was like, ghost game. That's it. And I just clicked. It clicked. Bro, I went right to the laptop. I started making the cringiest little slap stickers I could. <laughs> Everything that I could, man. And uh, ended up, like, taking the last bit of money that I had, buying a bunch of stickers and going out to another event with the locals and selling them. And I was like, man, I actually, like, sold out of all these stickers. I made a few hundred Easy. bucks. Fast forward to uh, Stansworth, Seattle. I, like, really could not afford to go. And it was, like, either pay rent and sit at home or take a risk and go to Seattle. So the one thing the locals boys taught me, um, like Jesse, Devin, David, Charles, um, especially uh, Devin and David, they they really pushed me to like take risks at things to, in your life to get to bigger right. goals. Get right? to where you want to Get be. to where you want to, like, like no risk, no reward is what they taught so, me. Yeah. And yeah, dude, I spent like a few hundred bucks on all these decals and Those games is out of Sweden, by the way. Oh, they are out of Sweden? Yeah. They, they had a studio in Vancouver though. EA does. EA owns them now and then closed them down. Mm. Beautiful. Fuck. <laughs> okay. And uh it was either pay rent or buy a bunch of stickers and drive down to Seattle with the boys and uh I think we know choice he made there yep i drove down to stance for seattle with the boys the boys got me in on top 100 floor with the locals booth and uh so i was so fortunate that they let me take all my stickers and sell them at their merch table and uh proud to say like we completely sold out of uh, those stickers and dude i came home with that money that i made on all those stickers and stuff and uh i was able to pay my rent i was able to buy more <laughs> merch and then me and Andre got to talking, and we started making, like, members-only banners for our friends. And uh, from there, man, it just snowballed. Like, people, like, we made it for our friends and our friend group, but people started seeing it were asking us about it, like, strangers. And then from there, it was like, okay, let's start making some stuff. So Andre fronted up some money, and we started making some stuff, and just continued to snowball and snowball and got more popular and more popular. We did some of our first events was... Uh, Actually, our very first event as a vendor, I think, was uh, Ill Motion, but it wasn't even a full vendor. Um, we went halves on the booth with uh, locals. <laughs> yeah, we went halves. In the split booth. Yeah, we did yeah. a split booth. Yeah, and um, we brought our first ever batch of hoodies to a show, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I did not sell very many. I think I maybe sold two or three, two friends, <laughs> like people that knew me. I mean, those are still sales, though. Those are still sales, and yeah. those are some of the better sales because yeah. your friends are supporting you, and they're supporting you in full. And uh, shout out Brady, Stiffy. If you watch this, buddy, thank you for buying hoodies off me for the start. Um, yeah. From there, it was like a little bit of money. I was like, okay, now I can see, like, two sides of it. I can see what sells, see what doesn't sell. Just because I like it doesn't mean it's going to sell. You know what right. I mean? 
Yeah. But you gotta um, know your market. Yeah. You 100%. have to know your niche. And um yeah, we uh just kept going with it and kept going and kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing. Even when it didn't work out, we like I never let it discourage us. We just stayed up and, and kept going. You lit prevailed through yep. all of it kind of thing. Yeah. A lot and, of hard stuff too, like going through COVID kind of thing. Yeah. That kind of So I think COVID is kind of where we like started to take it seriously. But the scariest thing is is we got this shop right before COVID. Hey Blade, wasn't it like it was Christmas of twenty nineteen we got this shop. Yeah, it was it was really close to COVID when we got the shop. So that that was crazy. I remember us sitting here being like watching the counter. Yeah. Yeah. Watching the COVID case counter or whatever oh, man. around the world. Yeah. And then um you used to look at that counter now and laugh. Yeah. I don't even dude. think you can find one anywhere. That stupid flu that everybody Yeah. When that the whole seasonal world cold decided to shut down. Yeah. So basically when um Bovid nineteen happened. We we just locked into the shop and uh, we just let her cook. We pulled our money up, me and Andre, and we bought equipment. We bought equipment to start making our own merchandise. We stopped outsourcing because there was no profit in outsourcing the way we were going. No. We were getting pretty ripped off left, right, and center, and we didn't see that until we started making our own stuff. And we're like, "Holy crap! This right. is how you do it. This is where the profit numbers are. And the, like the best way you can do your own business is do your own stuff, man." Always c- try and cut out the middleman as best as you can if it works out in, like, a sense of your time is money. So not if it's taking too much of your time, yeah. which is – that's a topic for another podcast. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we just locked in and started cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking. And uh, shout out Brandon. So scared. He put us on to the whole Shopify wave. Yeah. Um, we were on Big Cartel. We are like, a $9 a month – Fee. Some bullshit website. Yeah, man. we we couldn't even we couldn't even print shipping labels, man. It was so brutal, dude. It's winter. How is there a big ass fly <laughs> no, in this shop? No man. way, man. It's he's, been warm though. Dude, yeah, he's been wreaking havoc in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, that's why he's staying. Like yeah, <laughs> he's hooked, man. He's hooked on. Give him a zin. <laughs> give him a zin. Go you know, give that fly a zin a chino. He'll be out of here. <laughs> Like, uh, say when you were 20, just starting this brand kind of thing, or early stages kind of thing, and you were able to see into the future and see where it is now. Like, how do you think that would have made yourself feel? Back then, like, if I was looking into where we are at now, I wouldn't believe me. I wouldn't believe it. I would not believe the things that we've done, the things we've achieved, the places we've been, the events that we were able to do, the people that we've met. I wouldn't believe it. I I would not. No. No. Fair. I would not believe it, dude. Yeah. Um, granted, I think I was in a, like, I was in a very bad place in my life during that time. Fair. And I think yeah. that's kind of why I couldn't really see like a way out, if that would make sense. So to be able to say like, well, what would it be? What would you say? Dude, I don't think I believe it. I, I'm very grateful for what we've done and what we've achieved. I think with saying that, like, where would you see like this brand in the next five years kind of thing? Well, I don't want to jinx anything. But we are in talks with some pretty mainstream companies. I can't really say too much about it, but uh, it's, some big things are in the making to really, really solidify us as a brand. And um, hopefully a household name brand at the end of the day. Up there it's with like the big the ones. Goal. Up we there with be the up there one. with Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, shout yeah. out Aunt Jemima. Oh, man. They Best took her off the bottle the too, though, didn't oh, they? <laughs> That's, I'm not going to get into that. No. Bring back Aunt Jemiah on the bottles, or it's all smoke. <laughs> when we got into the shop and stuff, we 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 kept on rolling on and rolling on, and we got on the Shopify wave, and uh, from there, it was just crazy. Like, I started really getting into my art skills and drawing myself, and, uh, like, a lot of the early stage designs that you see are from, like, us, like, literally drawing on an outdated MacBook with a trackpad. Yeah. As the Insane, as the stencil man. man, yeah. I remember I couldn't. I did not understand how to make decals, or anything like or like design and Photoshop. Blade had to teach me, and it was brutal. I was drawing in Keynote on oh on God, on man. MacBook. Dude. <laughs> That's a slideshow. That's almost yeah. like a, a word. Yeah, thing like for a Apple. word document yeah. kind of thing. And we were overlaying shapes onto each other. Yeah. 
Hey, man, I made it work. Is there any designs that are still up from that keynote era? Uh, is there... Like, do we have anything still? I don't have anything on the site, but I kept a few of the original slap stickers. I did. I kept a few of the original slap stickers. Yeah, those might we might need to bring some of those back. It's a throwback. I wouldn't mind it. Uh, we yeah. got one that's really cool. It's the Midnight Phantoms one. I re- yeah, I, I know that one. Yeah, I like that one. I think yeah. we might have to do a throwback drop. Those we had a couple of those, and we brought them to where was it? Driven Saskatoon. Did we? I think so. I think it was that one. It was the white and black one, right? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. That was the other one. It was reverse. It was like white lettering on black. Right. Yeah. I know we sold out of them in Saskatoon, though. Really? Yeah. We brought about 20. I think you have 20 <laughs> left, and they all went. Oh, man. It was such a cringy saying on those white ones. But that though. was what the Saskatchewan boys liked oh, there, man. Oh, my God. Let's man. be real. Don't even remind me. <laughs> oh, my God. It was. Uh, it said something corny like, ghost gang. Run with us or run from us. <laughs> and I remember somebody commented on this that we posted our stickers and they go, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather do neither or something like that. Oh, man. Dude, that's so early. I think that like was 2019. Owen. I think that was Owen. Owen, if you're watching this, shout out, asshole. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, we just kept rolling on and rolling on and rolling on and, and just selling merch like a, like a motherfucker, just like nonstop. Pushing, drawing, pushing, drawing, pushing, drawing, dropping. Like, I think we're, we're at some point, we're dropping twice a month. Yeah. Two full-size drops a month. All like, done right here in Last year, it was super heavy. Last, last year was heavy. Last year was the busiest we've ever been online. And then this year was the busiest we've ever been in events. Yes. Because being we were able to... Everywhere. Everywhere. This year. Everywhere. We're in Vancouver, Seattle, Toronto, Tennessee, course, Dallas. hometown here. Um, yeah, all the Alberta events. We did Sask, even. We did Sask. Yeah, shout um, out to Prairie Boys. Yeah, and then, of course, we have the boys out in the East Coast holding stuff down. Yeah, so that's that's one of the big, big things that has really advanced the operation is uh, we brought in all of our friends that from far and near, because we have members all over the world, Sweden, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, all over the States, all over Canada, um, Belgium. Shout out Belgium boys. Belgium boys go hard for us. They, uh, I don't know what it is, but people in Belgium really, really mess with our stuff. And, um, yeah, they're just everywhere, man. So we got, uh, we got Luke in Halifax running on all the East Coast stuff. We got Josh out in uh, Toronto running all the Toronto sales. So they, all these boys have their own vendor tents. They sell merch for us out of there and, uh, they go ham. They just move in merch, move in weight, man. And uh, really getting us out there, like. It's one thing to like make money at this, but like with the, to just see your brand across the country, coast to coast, it's insane. Unreal. It's it's yeah. there's nothing that matches it. Like I don't like at the end of the day, I could care less about making money. I I care about the kid on the other side of the world wearing a ghost gang hoodie. Yeah, that's what means a lot to me. Unreal feeling. Who just like thing, they right? they vibe with us. They see our vibe. They want to you know involve themselves in our lifestyle because like it's not. It's not just a hoodie that we sell. It's not just no. a sticker that we sell. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have more members than that that are running stuff. Like our U.S. boys, we got Kibby out holding it down in like Portland, Seattle area, Pacific we got, Northwest. We got Goo. We got Goo. Goo Shout Hellfire. Out goo. Hellfire. Shout out Goo <laughs> Hellfire. So the crazy thing is, is like a lot of these people we got to meet for the first time this year. It, I don't know, man. It's, it's something different when it's your internet friends, dude. Yeah. Like we're all tight here, we're all homies here. We got a lot of friends Isn't here. Isn't Kibby really short, too? K- no, Goo's short. Goo's short. Sorry, That's Goo. It. I don't mean to call you out like that, <laughs> but like, it yeah. just threw you off when you met him for the first time. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. It, no, oh, it didn't throw. Me. I knew you. I knew I was coming. Like I'm a taller guy, yeah. so like I knew like I expected it. But <laughs> Goo, you're just a little guy, eh? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be out there next year to see you, pal. Yeah, you better be listening. <laughs> you better get taller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna put Rowan high heels. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. No, Gatlinburg this year was. Oh my god, dude. I Just can't. A movie. Oh, you can't. They, nothing can describe it. If you're if your ass ain't in Gatlinburg come fall next year, you're doing something wrong. I I know it's an expensive trip. I know there's a lot, like it's just a lot to go that far. For us, it was a, a twenty thousand kilometer round trip. Because we did LZ Fest Toronto, and then we drove directly south the very next weekend for 
Gatlinburg. For slamming enough, yeah. Yeah, and then we drove to Dallas for a dollar USI boy dollar sign. <laughs> 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 I don't know what I can say and what G5 I can say. G59, fam. G59, yeah, you're... Yeah. Yeah. So, man, that'll be me next year. Yeah. If I can get a passport. <laughs> see if they'll let me out of the country. <laughs> well, they ain't going to let you out of the country. Nope. I wouldn't. show. Freddy, I wouldn't let you out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky to even be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, just like the, just to see the way that the brand is advanced is insane. And like honestly, we could not do it without the support of everybody who like supports us, watches our videos, um, buys the merch, comes up and hangs out with us at the shows and stuff like that. Like, it's it's insane. It's it's unmatched, dude. To be able to do this and call this a job, it's it's not. I, it does not feel like a job every day that I wake up. It's just making merch with the homies. Building sick cars. I, we haven't even talked about building the cars, no. but uh, no. that's another big thing. Yeah, we're all over. Every car here has its own story. Yeah, kind of thing. Every car um, has a story. <laughs> rest in peace, the Skyline, for the third time this year. Oh man. Yeah, uh, we can leave that on. That's a different. Story that's a whole different topic, man. What that's do we a... think of um, the Edmonton scene where it's currently sitting? Uh, all their cars. I mean, I don't want to step on toes, but like, I think this scene is dead. There's some really sick builds here. Yeah, there's great people. They, I think we have great people around here. Yeah, but I don't know mm. if the, <laughs> there's some questionable people. I'm not gonna call names out, but no, we don't yeah. need to. No, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jordan's I, I got think, Jordan's got big beef everywhere all the yeah, time. Yeah, I do. No, I have. Yeah, I have shooters. <laughs> yeah, for real. Got hit his choppers in the trunk. Watch yeah. out. <laughs> no, you know what's in the trunk? I got like a fucking drying cloth and two by fours. Hey man, you might be able to smother somebody with a drying cloth. <laughs> <laughs> water, quick detail water, water <laughs> board them with quick detailer. <laughs> you got the board. You got the quick detail. You got the, <laughs> you got the cloth. You're good to go. Need, You're good to go. Oh, that's bad. Uh, but all that aside, no, like the the scene the scene here was good and it has a lot of potential to be good again. But I think what needs to happen is the uh, the policing needs to get uh, the yep. self policing needs to go up, and the actual police need the to, to bugger off, cool off. It's not even the police, dude. The police are chill. Like Edmonton Police Service is pretty chill. It's all the peace officers. It's the peace officers, yeah. man. It's the bylaw. If you guys don't know what peace officers are, they're bylaw, and they're literally hired just to fuck your day up. You know what the weird thing is? Like my Subaru, it's it's one loud too visually loud kind of thing. Low, tons of shit about it is illegal kind of thing. I have the tint and all that too. Mm-hmm. I haven't been pulled over once this year in its current form it's kind weird. of thing. See, I, I want to say something right stock, now, but, but I don't know if I would get canceled or not. Why? Go on. Just say it. Mm. Tell me. Welcome to 2023 where you can cut your muffler off. Or Well, no. <laughs> yeah, or you no. Can, I know what you're going to say. You know what I was going to say. Yeah, you, you can just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> <That's fucking laughs> You oh, can't so cut good. your muffler off, but I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Do with your imagination what you will. It's crazy, man. Like, <sighs> stock form, I pulled three, four times kind of thing. Mm-hmm. As soon as it was low, everyone left me alone. Weird. But I don't just where you live. Like, You're, like, outside of the, the main outside city. Outside of Edmonton. We still have our CMP there. Our CMP is a lot chiller nowadays compared to peace officers, too, though. That's true. Yeah. And for whatever reason, it seems like they're all here near the shop all the time. Yeah. I literally feel like they squat in our shop because there's just modified cars coming in and out, in and out yeah, all the time. Just especially, at, like, uh, we're pretty close to, like, quite a few different tuner shops right yeah. around the area. Triple S is thing. very close. Ronin Performance is very close. Signal. Even. Signal. Yeah. All those boys are mad close to us. and yeah. uh, So everything's in and out in this area, yeah. too. It's all Subarus and Supras and Skylines and, and, and this, that, and the other. Loud, loud as shit. And yeah. it's just, I don't know, it's kind of a heat bag spot. Totally. <laughs> but Especially having dinos nearby, too, right? Making noise all day. Yeah, you dinos know? are a big thing. Yeah, you see a lot of noise complaints, too. Yep. But it's industrial zone. They can't do anything. No. Nope. They can't say anything about it. And it's private property. Once, you, once like, all these cars, once they're out here on this back pad, there's yeah. nothing they can do. Oh, private property. No. Like, you we've had them follow. We've had the peace officers, dude, try and get out off the main street and follow us in here. Once we're on the property, they can't touch us. Yeah. We're sitting here looking at them. Like, they're just hounding us, man. They're just, it's harassment, dude. It's seriously harassment over modified vehicles. Yeah. 
Like go after the drunk drivers. Yo, go totally, after man. go Those after the problems. Go after the, the, the trucks that are falling apart, all the old Fords that are falling apart with rust on the on we, the highway. We call out like the takeover people and the um I don't even know. Like that's about it really. That I'd say that you'd call like a hooning kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But they're not the people causing accidents and hurting people. Who? What do you mean? Like, um, you see more drunk drivers, you see more yeah. um texting and driving kind of thing. Yeah. Those are the people that the cops should be after. Not the people that spent a couple thousand dollars on their car that they paid ten for. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's insane. Our buddy Shelby got totally shafted oh, this year, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We were literally driving down the road to get coffee and he got pulled over and uh they give him they gave him I don't know, dude. The camper, cop came up, it was exhaust. some British cop and he came up and he was like the wheels are all wrong. <laughs> it was yeah. just like a whole thing. He was your like, "Camber is way over." Yeah, your camber is way over. Uh, the wheels are all wrong. What did Shelby say? Your dude, exhaust, like, your tint. Yeah. He was like, he was like, okay. No, he was like, oh, I know. <laughs> he just kind of took it. <laughs> you just kind of took it, man, and that's all you can do. Oh man, I love you, Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Shelby, dude. Yeah, he didn't deserve that, man. Nah, ain't no. No, nope, not a chance. We kind of touched base on like the um, our villain arc story of Ghost Gang. Um, it that very lightly scrubbing into it. There's a lot more behind the scenes that went down, but uh, we could always get back into that into another podcast. We have a big merch drop coming. Shameless plug. Got to plug our own stuff. Absolutely. But uh, we have. A very exciting drop coming. This is the throwback drop for November. Almost every hoodie we've ever had is going live on the website this month. Maybe a couple new products. Maybe we'll a couple see. new ones. No, there is a couple new ones. I'll there's spoil a, that right yeah. now. There is a couple new. There's some bangers coming out. Yeah. Um. Shout out LS Bren. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Matt Skoke. <laughs> yeah, dude, that guy's dope. Oh man, the, one of the sickest artists. We like that's one of our main artists now is Matt Skoke. Oh, hundred percent. M A D. We're gonna be working with him. M A D S K O K. Mad Skok. Mad Skok. Uh, M A D S K O K on Instagram. Man, just link him. <laughs> just, yeah, just look him up, dude. If you guys need artwork of your car done, that's your guy. That's yeah, your guy. 100%. Igor, right? Igor. Igor. Yeah. Igor, yeah, Igor Igor's the man, dude. Getting money to him sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, but he lives in Russia. No, he doesn't live in Russia. He doesn't live in Russia? He's from Russia. During the war, he escaped. Oh. I, I'm not going to say where he is. Yeah. But he got fair. he got out during that. So I don't know how we even talk about that. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that kind of stuff. But uh, anyways, yeah, shout yeah. out Igor. Shout out Igor. <laughs> One of the best artists I've ever seen. Yeah, man. Uh, he made all of our Gatlinburg specialty stuff. And yeah. uh, shout out Tennessee. We sold out of everything in the first day, all of our Gatlinburg designs, dude. Yeah. All of it. T-shirts, hoodies, gone. That's because Igor drew it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, uh, we will be having Black Friday. or Not Black Friday. Uh, it's going to be Black Friday. Wait, is it Black Friday or is it Black Cyber? Friday is in two weeks. Yes, man. Black Friday yeah. and Cyber Monday. I don't know why I always associate Black Friday with Christmas. Yeah, that's I, boxing. That's boxing day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Black Friday and Cyber Monday, dude, look out. November is going to be crazy. We are going to be selling stuff way too cheap, but it's all in good fun. We want everybody to be able to get stuff for their families for Christmas. We want homies to be able to get stuff for themselves for cheap. So look forward to that. Good stuff. I don't know what else to add, man. <laughs> good st- I think uh yeah. I think that may be good to to uh wrap it up there. That was uh that was a good first podcast. Obviously it's gonna be a little rough around the edges, so please bear with us. We will get better. Um Blade over here is a pretty big perfectionist, so he's going to be making us uh do a lot of things better oh, next absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah. You're oh. gonna see some cool guests come up on yeah on this podcast too. Or else so. uh if we don't do things properly, um I think Blade's gonna give us a pee pee slap. Multiple. Let's he said go, multiple. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hope the hope the cock's as thick as his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's a wrap. Yeah, That's cut a wrap. it. Cut it. <laughs> <laughs>